salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked and even my enemies and foes came upon me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and they fell. When depression came upon me to eat up my flesh, it stumbled and it fell. When war came upon me to eat up my flesh, it stumbled and it fell. When trauma came upon me to eat up my flesh, it stumbled and it fell. When defeat came upon me to eat up my flesh, it stumbled and it fell. Though an host should encamp around me, this is one thing that my heart shall believe. One thing that I fear, that I desire, that I will see in the land of the living is that I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever, 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 forever. Spirit of the living God, Holy Spirit move in this place. Holy Spirit come in this place. We recognize you as the Alpha and the Almighty, the beginning and the beloved, the Christ and the cornerstone, the door and the deliverer, the elect and the everlasting, the faithful and the forgiver, the grace and the glory, the healer and the holy one, the icon and the Emmanuel, the just and the Jehovah, the king and the kinsman redeemer, the lion, the love and the lamb, the mediator and the messiah, the navigator and the Nazarene, the omniscient and the omnipotent. You are the prince of peace. You are the question and the answer, the redemption and the resurrection, the son and the savior, the tribe, the tested, the unlimited understanding, the vision and the victory, the wisdom and the word, spirit of the living God, move in this house right now. Spirit of the living God, baptize this place right now. Spirit of the living God, set down in this house right now. Let the anointing of worship, let the anointing of wisdom, let the anointing of the prophetic, let the anointing of freedom, let the anointing of power sit down in this house. The grass may wither, the flower may fade, but your word shall stand forever. They who worship him must worship in spirit and in truth. We bind the hand of the deceiver this morning. We bind each and every mind binding spirit. We counsel it and we break every spirit of discouragement. We break every spirit of depression. We break every spirit of fear. For God hasn't given us the spirit of fear, but of power, love, and of a sound mind. We will worship you for who you are. We will worship you for what you've done. We will worship you for what you are about to do. Holy Spirit flood this house. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Open up your mouth and shout behind me. I'm redeemed. I'm redeemed. I'm redeemed. I'm redeemed. Let's worship. Shout unto God with a voice of triumph. If you know that God's been good to you, I double dare you to make the loudest noise today. Come on, come on, come on. Today is Palm Sunday, y'all. So we ought to be giving God the loudest shout of praise. He did it for us, y'all. He died for us, y'all. Look at somebody and say, he did it for me. He did it for me. He did it for me. Let's go, Lee. I need y'all to clap your hands on it. Let's go. Let's have a party. Let's go. It's a real easy song, it says this. Our God is an awesome God. He reigns forever and ever. Our God is an awesome God. He reigns forever and ever. Our God is an awesome God. He reigns forever and ever. Our God is an awesome God. He reigns forever and ever. Team, our God, save 
hands on it. Let me see some. My God, it's big, so strong, <laughs> and mighty. Hey, and this plan for me oh, is victory, victory, victory. One time, baby. My God, my God, it's big, so strong. about to be a beautiful moment right here. When we say forever and ever, I want you to throw your hands like this. Y'all ready? Y'all ready? If you know that God's been good to you, I double dare you to shout. Let's go lean, huh? Let's go. Everybody, here we go. Forever and ever.
Everybody say Hosanna. plans for me Jeremiah 29 and 11 for I know the thoughts that I have towards you thoughts of good and not of evil Yay! thoughts of good and not of evil to give you respect and I feel a wind right there. Oh, 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 I don't know if y'all caught that. Oh, 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 oh. we gotta go. Oh, 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 hey, hey. Oh, 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 you amazing God. Hey, oh, oh, you an awesome God. Oh, oh, you are magnificent. Oh, oh, and we reverence you. Oh, I had to realize that I just don't reverence him for, for the things that he can do but I reverence him because he's just God Yay! Uh, and there's none like him there's none nowhere searched all over Yay! couldn't find nobody like him uh, look high and low still could take oh yeah Still couldn't find nothing like him. I tried everything else, but when I tried God, He never fails me. He never fails me. He never fails me. He always comes through. He comes through right on time. He Never seen God fail. I ain't never. I know that's kind of hood, but you ought to just look at somebody and say, "Hey, I ain't never seen God fail me. I ain't never seen him. I ain't never seen him fail me. I might didn't. I, he might didn't come like I want him to come, but he came right on time though. And at that name, every knee shall bow. Every tongue must confess that y'all ain't saying nothing. Hands lifted. I want you to begin to worship God like God is standing right in front of you. Come on.
He's an awesome, amazing God. lift your hands. We're going to start right here. It says, I stand amazed at your glory. I stand amazed at your strength. I stand amazed at your power. So amazing. So amazing. I'm going to sing it again. Oh, I stand amazed at your strength.
everybody, everybody say, come on, say so. Yeah. Hold on, praise team. Everybody out here say. Well, since he's so amazing, I might as well stay right there, Lee. Stay right there. You are perfect in all of your ways. Perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. To see. You are perfect. You are perfect in all of your ways. Yeah. So just lift your hands, everybody, and we say, so amazing, amazing, yeah, so oh, oh, amazing, amazing. with me
that's about to get ready to come up, but that's something that's happening in the atmosphere right now. That's something that's going on in the atmosphere. I feel fire in here. Hey, hey, hey. I feel glory in here. Hey. I don't but dare you not to touch nobody. I don't need you to touch nobody. But I want you to touch yourself and say, self, there's so much more to this story. The book is not finished. The book is not finished. Hey. The book is not finished. The book is not finished. I got a testimony. I got a testimony. More. So much more. There's so much more. There's so much more. There's so much more. Welcome to your new season. Welcome to your new season. Welcome to your emergence. We are merging. We are merging. We are merging. We are merging. So much more. So much more. So much more. I hear God. I hear the Lord saying, I don't know who this is for, but it's for somebody. Don't count a good person out because you met them in a bad situation. I, I, I don't know who I'm talking to, but I hear it as clear as day. The same way God ain't done with you. God is not done with them either. He's asking you, will you see them the same way that he sees you? I don't know who this is for, but I hear it as clear as day. Don't count a good person out because you met them in a trying situation. You just don't know that there is so much more to their story. I need you to think back in you and your trying situation. How did it feel when they counted you out? How did it feel when they dogged you out? How did it feel when they left you out? Because people had left you out you tend to thought that God had left you out too. Until he was just letting you get the patience to understand. The old folks said it like this, he may not come when you want him. But boy, when he do come, here it come, anytime is the right time for God. Any time is the right time for God. I don't know who this is. I'm done with this. I'm done. I'm gone. Don't count a good person out because you met them in a trying and a bad situation. Maybe you giving up on somebody that God is using, that God may be wanting to use you to speak a word of life in them. See, we... We tend to, you know, we minister ourselves. He ain't done with me yet. Sometimes you need to give to somebody else and say he ain't done with you yet. He ain't done with you yet. He ain't done with you yet. He ain't done with. with Sometimes it ain't. Hallelujah. Because AJ, somebody just may be feeling like Hosanna was feeling. When he was riding through on the donkey and they were saying, Hosanna, Hosanna, son of the most high God, Hosanna. The very next week when he was on the cross, they was hollering, crucify, crucify. I'm trying to let you know some. The church is looked at like this. One week we'll be saying Hosanna. The next week we'll be saying, crucify. That's the church. That's how the world look at the church. And so the Lord is telling me to tell you, don't count a good person out. Because you met them in a bad situation. Because I think about what if they would have counted me out. Don't make me run up in here. I, I will. Father, in the name of Jesus, send a new 
weight of your spirit. Send a fresh grace. Send a fresh power. Send a fresh anointing. We bind the spirit of guilt. We bind the spirit of fear. We bind the spirit of condemnation. We bind the spirit of shame. We bind the spirit of regret. I loose the peace of God that surpasses all understanding. I lose the anointing of acceptance to help us to understand that we've been accepted in the beloved. Holy Spirit, come. Let your fresh fire, let your fresh power, let your fresh anointing rest. We agree with you. You are not done with us yet. We thank you that you are not done with us yet. And we ask you, do what you do. We give you the permission. Use us as you see fit. In Jesus' name we pray. Everybody give God a hand clap of praise. Appreciate it. Everybody give God a hand clap of praise. Come, come on, come on, come on, man. Come on, not no praise for me. Praise for him. You just said how amazing he was. He's the wonderful counselor. He's the mighty God, the everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Give God. Hallelujah. You may be seated in the presence of God. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning again to my Transforming Faith Christian Center family, to my TFCCE church, to my friends and family all around the world. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Holy Spirit, come. We want more of your grace. We want more of your anointing. We want more of your peace. We want more of your power. We want more of your love. We want more of your strength. We want more of your confidence. We want more of your grace. We want more of your forgiveness. We want more. We want more of your vision. We want more of your health. We want more of your strength. We want more of your favor. We want more of your increase. We want more of your acceptance. We want more of your bonus. We want more of your creativity. We want more of your deliverance. We want more of your encouragement. We want more of your faith. We having the same spirit of faith. Therefore we believe. Therefore we speak. We want more of your glory. We want more of your healing. We want more of your intercession. More of your joy. More of your kindness. More of your knowledge. More of you. More, 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 more. Father, stretch our capacity to be able to handle the more that you are releasing. Do it, Holy Spirit. We need more of your truth so it can be less of deception. To the, to, oh, I got you to the transforming chamber, to the youth in the transforming chamber. It's your time. It's transforming chamber time, youth. Yep, come on, come on. It's transforming chamber time, youth. To all the youth from the ages of 12 to 18, you can be released to the transforming chamber. Are y'all ready for the word of God? Are y'all ready for the word of God? Are y'all ready for the word of God? Hallelujah. As you all can see, my beautiful, lovely wife is not in the building on today, but we honor her. We celebrate her. We appreciate her. And I want everybody to look at the camera and say, Tiffany, we miss you. We love you. We celebrate you. We honor you. We give God the glory for your life. Right now, it would be her time for Tiffany talks and she would have a word that would shift probably the entire atmosphere but she's on a trip that she had been planning for a couple of years and I said babe go ahead 
because she works two jobs, just being honest with y'all. She worked full-time in corporate America. She worked full-time for Transforming Faith. And so I know we're in the rhythm of rocking and rolling. We're accelerating. But at the same time, she needed a break, and I wanted her to have a break. And we needed her to have a break also. Absolutely. Babe, we honor you. We celebrate you. And we know you looking. We know you right here in our face. We know you there. Yeah, for sure. And... Um, Without a shadow of a doubt, we give glory, we give honor, we give preeminence to you, babe. And I love you. And uh, we're about to preach it through. Before I go any further, I just want to make a, a firm, bold call to action right here before we go into the message. On April 3rd, April 4th, and April 5th, we're having the Freedom Conference right here at Transforming Faith Christian Center. And ladies and gentlemen, because the number one pursuit for this house is the presence of God, and because the vision of this house is revival, start revival, sustain revival, supply the world with revivalists, we need a baptism of the Spirit. And I'm calling some generals who are carrying apostolic anointings, prophetic anointings, healing anointings, supernatural anointings into the atmosphere so that we can all get on the same rhythm. And there is the prophetic apostolic supernatural synergy that can begin to take place. And there can be an impartation that will be left at this house that will never leave us the same. May I submit to you, I'm not having a conference for where we are. I'm having a conference for where we are going. And you have to get a quilt with power. I'm not talking about performance. I'm talking about power. May I submit to you that the Bible, the God of the Bible, is not a God of the Bible of just principles. He's a God of power. Yeah, and the power was never supposed to stop or end at the end of Revelation. May I submit to you that the Bible is still being written right now because it was wrote to the degree that it didn't end. May I submit to you that the question is that we see everybody else in the Hall of Faith in Hebrews 11. The question is, will your name get to the Hall of Faith? May I submit to you that Apostle John Eckhart is an author of probably about 26 or 27 books. He's an activator in the prophetic, meaning that if there is a prophetic gift in you that is in embryonic form, I'm thoroughly convinced and fully persuaded that if you just get in his presence, he don't even got to prophesy on you or lay hands on you. He can make a decree in the midst of the presence and what's in you will start coming to life. There are certain things you don't want to miss. So I'm inviting you, Dr. Sharon Nesbitt, we was on live the other night and y'all know that the enemy was fighting us because we had an echo on the live. But after the live was over, we talked another 30 minutes. And when I tell y'all that the presence of God just invaded my office and I said, oh my God, lady, I'm so happy I met you. Yeah, she have services on 10 o'clock on Sunday, Saturday morning. And I said, Dr. Nesbitt, do you travel on Sundays? She said, yeah, my schedule about eight months out, so it ain't nothing but a miracle that I'm with you because how we got connected. I say, Dr. Nesbitt, there's going to be some days that you're going to have to just show up in transforming faith on a Sunday morning. May I submit to you, uh, let, me, let me say this, let me say this, let me say this. When you're walking in real power, you don't have to be explosive in your preaching. Did you hear what I just said? When signs, miracles, and wonders follow, you really ain't got to raise your voice too much. Because the signs, 2 Corinthians 12 and 12, Bible, put it up if you want to, the signs of a true apostle are signs, miracles, and wonders following. May I submit to you, this lady has a supernatural ministry that is absolutely changing lives. We just want her in the house. To everybody's on the sound of my voice, you can go register right now. Please, listen to me. 
We got a number, and if we make capacity, I just want to let y'all know that night sessions will not be free if we make capacity. I'm giving you a heads up right now, and the registration is going. Um, ask, yeah, I'm letting you know. I'm just letting you all know. You know how we think. I just make the night sessions or whatsoever. Hear me. As registration is going, I want to give you your opportunity now because this is going to be something that's going to change every dimension of your life. I'm in a series right now, and the series is entitled The Danger of Deception. We're in part three. Today is going to be part four. Man, when I tell y'all that I believe we're in the middle of my next book, I believe we in it right now. Keisha, God has been dealing with me about the six dimensions of darkness and everything in order to get to the darkness, it has to start with deception. As the revelation continue, I, I'm trying to stop it, y'all. I promise you I am. The revelation, it just seems like Every time I get to a certain point in studying, Miss Katie, God will just open up a window and just a gush or just whoosh, whoosh. And I'm like, I can't preach all this, can I, God? Like, all of it? Ladies and gentlemen, God is trying to equip us. Watch this. In spiritual warfare, to get on the offense and not stay on the defense. Can I tell you what one of our biggest problem is? We too reactive to darkness. Did you hear the term reactive? That means he got to do something to me before I do something to him. Or he got to do something to me before I start protecting or so I start Right, I got to wait on him. But in any game, you got offense and you got defense. I ain't, listen, it's, 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 man. We have already won. So we don't have to be fighting like this. We push the issue. Are you with me? You may be down, but you don't have to. Sh Let me. Uh 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 uh. And I promise you, I'm gonna try to do this in under an hour. Smile, smile. I've been preaching long lately, and I'm trying my best. Trying my best. I'm trying my best. Give me some. I've been trying my best. Been trying my best. Promise you. Promise you I've been trying my best to get it down. <laughs> Let's go with uh, Matthew, the fourth chapter, starting in verse 1. Matthew chapter 4 starting at verse 1 Holy Spirit come Everybody stand to your feet for the reading of the word. To the people that's coming in, y'all can come on. You can take your seats if you don't mind. Let me pray. I, I, didn't, I didn't feel something real fast. Spirit of the living God, touch me. Touch my mind. Touch my will. Touch my emotions. Touch my mouth. Holy Spirit, come. Let the rhythm of your spirit flow. I yield my heart. I yield my mind. 
I yield my mouth to you. And I say, Holy Spirit, sit down. Rest, rule, reign. Have your way. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Yeah, my people in the house, come on. Come on, sit down. Take a seat. They can take all three of my seats. They can take, take one can sit there in mine, and the other two can sit right there. Lana, I didn't know you was coming too, man. Bless you, man. How you doing? This is my hardly initiated family, y'all. They done eased in the house. Come on, y'all. Come on, come on, come on. Boy, y'all came in at the right time. Y'all almost missed this thing, boy. Here we go. Then Jesus was led up of the Spirit into the wilderness. Who? Was led by who? To the wilderness? You mean to tell me that God will lead us to a wilderness? I didn't say my mistakes. I didn't say my bad decisions. I didn't say my mouth got me into some. I'm saying, watch this, Jesus has just gotten baptized, come up out of the Jordan, and the heavens breaks open, and the dove begins to come down. And it begins to set on him and it remains. The dove is a representation of the Holy Spirit of God engulfing him from, from the top to the bottom. And the Bible says, after a celebration, this was a moment of celebration that the Spirit of God began to drive him to the wilderness. Wilderness is a representation of loneliness. The wilderness is a representation of confusion. The wilderness is a representation of no purpose. The wilderness is a representation of being in a place that I do not want to be in because there is the first place that I will feel like that God has left me. When he gets to the wilderness, watch this, the enemy led him there to be tempted. I mean, God, I'm sorry. God, I'm sorry. Let me rephrase this the right way. The Spirit of God led him into the place to be tempted. Temptation. Pressure applied to your selfish thinking. That's what temptation is. It's pressure being applied to your thoughts that are motivated by selfishness. It's pressure that is being applied to your memories that are motivated by selfishness. It's pressure that's being applied to your imagination that's motivated by selfishness. It's pressure being applied to your feelings that are motivated by selfishness. The temptation is coming from the devil. Verse 2, let me, let me hurry up, let me get out of this. And when he had, watch this, he's fasted for 40 days and for 40 nights, so now the body is broken down. And he was hungry. And when the tempter came to him, he said this, if. You are the son of God. Command these stones to be made bread. Can I, can I show you something real quick? In other words, you have a desire. Fulfill this desire. Y'all will catch it in about 30 minutes. I bet you that. I bet you that. I'm going to say it one more time. You have a desire. Now fulfill it. I'm going to get there. But watch this. But Jesus said, it's written, man shall not live by the physical bread alone, 
but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. Part four, the danger of deception. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Ladies and gentlemen, we've been in this series for the last three weeks and it's entitled The Danger of Deception. And one of the reasons why we've been in this series is because, give me some, just continue some. One of the reasons why we've been in this series is because you have an enemy who studied you. And he studied you because he wants to deceive you. He studied you to the degree to deceive, to deceive you because when he deceives you, now he can steal your confidence from you. He can kill your dreams and kill your goals and he wants to destroy your destiny. Watch this. And since he knows the weapons that you are going to use against him, don't you think that you should know the weapons that he's going to use against you. Anytime you're in a fight with somebody and somebody has studied you and they know the weapons that you are going to bring against them, isn't it wisdom for you to know exactly what type of weapons that they are going to come at you? Why is that, Pastor James? Because the goal is to win the war and the easiest way for me to win the war is to disarm them of their weapons. If you are coming at me with a knife and I can take the knife from you, I can take the knife from you and use the knife against you. If you come to me with a gun and I can take the gun from you, now I can use the gun against you. And nine times out of ten, ten times out of ten, if I got the weapon and you ain't got the weapon, you can't beat me. But if you got a weapon and I don't have a weapon, and I cannot disarm you, I'm at your mercy. Are you with me? So the goal is, what's that? We need to figure out the enemy's biggest weapon. And we know that his biggest weapon is the weapon of deception. Because the enemy cannot defeat you, Alex. He can only deceive you by making suggestions to make you run behind what he's saying. And at that point, he deceives you out of the truth. The second reason why we're in this series is because God has spoken a word over this church. And he wants this word to come to pass, Tyron. Are you with me? To all the guests that's in here on the day, God spoke a word over this church in the beginning of 2024. He said this, this is the year for us to emerge. Right? And so watch this. God wants this word to come to pass. But we know this, in order for the word to come true, we got some personal work and we got some corporate work that we all have to do. I know a couple of you, if you guess, you may be saying to yourself, well, if God said it's going to happen, it's just going to happen. The first principle that I need you to know is this about deception. Get this in your heart. In order for the enemy to get you to buy into a complete lie, the first thing he has to do is start off by giving you a partial truth. Do, do, you, do, you, do you see what I'm saying? In order for the enemy to get you to buy into a complete lie, the first thing he has to do is start off by giving you a partial truth. The great deceivers know that in order for you, watch this, in order to lure you into some deception, first they got to bait you with a little bit of truth. If I'm a deceiver and I need to lure you into some deception, the first thing I need to do is give you some truth. If I don't give you a little bit of truth, then you won't be set up to be deceived. And I mean, are you with me? Let me give you an example. Oh, okay, so you got a young lady that wants, she wants to be married, she wants a husband. So he's 6'6", he drives a Mercedes, he have, he's, he's making $300,000 a year. He's looking good on the outside, he checks the box. That's 
the truth. He checks the box. Watch this. He looks at you. He smiles at you. And he lets you know he likes you. That's the truth. But the thing you may not know is this. In order to get in that car, in order to live in that house, in order to spend that money, what's going to have to happen is you're going to have to let him abuse you. You're going to have to let him disrespect you. You're going to have to let him dog you because watch this. He showed you a partial truth. He showed you what he looked like on the outside, but he never showed you his lifestyle on the outside. So therefore, you jumped into a partial truth. And that partial truth made you buy into a complete lie. He looked good, but he's disrespectful. He looks good, but he don't even, he don't even handle his pants right. He looked good, but he nasty. So the major deceivers know this. If I'm going to deceive you, I got to bait you. Real fishermen know that when I'm fishing for certain type of fish, I can't take a worm out into the Gulf of Mexico. I got to get the right type of bait, baby, in order to... May I submit to you? May I submit to you? The bait is used to lure you, to entice you, to tempt you, to get you in the car my god and now the real you comes out because they baited you with a little bit of truth the real deceivers know that if i'm going to deceive you i'm coming with just an ounce of truth and i'm going to have a whole gallon of lies so if satan is going to deceive you the first thing he's going to do is give you some Talk to me. Don't give you truth. I need you to get this. Don't just come here and say, I went to church just to be going to church. Because then the enemy going to keep on defeating you when you know that, when you can't recognize what's the bait that he set up for me. He got bait for you. He got bait for me. He got bait for you. He got bait for you. And the goal is, in order not to be deceived, locate your bait. What is the specific thing that is going to lure you away from the particular place of freedom? When the bait comes and it starts luring you, you got your eyes on what's luring you. It is making you walk away directly from the truth. Powerful principle, ain't it? So what the enemy does is this. Watch this. He say this, God gave you a word. The word going to come to pass. Partial truth. Partial truth. Pastor James, what do you mean? Yep, we all do know that God is all knowing. Meaning he's omniscient. God is all present. Meaning he's everywhere. God is all power, meaning he's omnipotent, omnipotent, omnipotent. God is immutable, meaning unchangeable. God is also all integrity, meaning that his being is integrated into his word. So he do say, not a word will go out of my mouth and return back to be void. And it shall accomplish everything that I said it was going to do. He said that though after he said this. Let us make man in our image after our likeness. Let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, over the fowl of the air, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. Watch this. He he said this first let us make man in our image after our likeness let them if God is all knowing all present all all uh, knowing all present all power if God is immutable if God is in is he's integrated within himself he's all integrity watch this here it comes for my Baptist people. This means God is sovereign. The sovereignty of God means absolute authority. So in his absolute authority, follow me, follow me. In his absolute authority, he said, let them 
have dominion. So in his sovereignty, he passes responsibility. The responsibility is rule everything. Here it comes. However you decide to rule. This means that if God speaks to me, I got a decision to receive and to marry and to couple with whatever God said. God can speak, but in my responsibility, if I do not become one, if I do not marry what God said, now the word coming from heaven cannot be manifested in the earth because God needs some cooperation. God needs a body. Why you say that, Pastor James? Because the Bible says faith without works is dead. Faith is substance, but belief is acceptance of a substance. I don't think y'all caught what I just said. I promise you don't. Faith is substance. Belief is acceptance of substance. So faith has to marry belief before you get the totality of faith. Faith is the substance, Hebrews 11 and 1. Faith is the substance. What is the substance, Pastor James? Words. Faith is the substance of things, the substance of the words, hopeful. Watch this. If substance are words, the question becomes, who's the source of the substance? Either the Holy Spirit is the source or a demonic spirit is the source. Whoever the source is, watch this, substance is just lingering. Substance is a neutral and supernatural power that will work however you decide to work. Words will work however you decide to work them. So in James 2 and 26, he says this, faith without works is dead. The partial truth is God speaks, but the entire truth is I believe what he speaks. I accept what he speaks. I marry what he speaks. I walk out on what he speaks. I marry what he speaks. I become what he speaks. I do what God says in order for the word to come to pass. Why? Because faith without works is the enemy can speak. You know what the enemy can say? He can say, man, he can tell the married man, go get your secretary. What make you think him, what, 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 why, how you think he just went and got the secretary? He heard a suggestion. He heard the neutral substance. There you go. He heard the neutral and supernatural power that works however he decides to work it. He heard something on the inside. Faith cometh by hearing. Come on, faith teachers. What my faith folks at? Right? We talking faith right now. And all I'm trying to show you is this. When the enemy deceives you, he deceives you by faith. He says something to you that you believed, and when he said it, you became it, and you got the fruits of what he said. Oh, here come, here come the example. Pastor James, well, God told me I'm going to be a wife, and I need to know why I ain't became a wife yet. Thank you for asking. How do I execute my faith in what God said? May I submit to you? Here it comes. Start acting like a wife in your day-to-day -day lifestyle now. Clean up your house every day. Cook four times out of a week. Get your hair done. Keep your nails done. Learn how to sacrifice and serve somebody else and learn how to be submissive. Learn how to be submissive today. 
Because if you ain't submissive today, you're not going to be submissive when he comes. If you don't cook today, you're not going to cook when he comes. If you don't clean today, you're not going to clean when he comes. If you don't keep your hair done and your nose right, I mean your, your nails right today. Your nose too, I guess, okay. If you don't do all those wifely things today, then this means that you don't believe that you wifey material. Because when I hear whatever God says or whatever the enemy said, I go behind what he said. I throw my life into what he said. I don't care what nobody think, say, feel, or believe. When the Lord speaks to me, if it means walking away from anybody, I heard God. So faith is not illustrated tied by what I say. Faith is illustrated by what I do. You can't say you got faith in God when you don't live for God. You can't say you a believer when you ain't living like believers. This is why the world thinks the church is a hypocrite. Because they saying one thing, doing another. So is your faith in truth? Or is your faith in a lie? So all I'm trying to do is show you that substance is neutral. Faith is the substance of things hopeful. The first thing I need to do is locate where in the world is this substance that I'm believing, where is it coming from? Because if I can notice where it's coming from, ladies and gentlemen, may I submit to you, may I submit to you, I can make the decision to choose the right way and express the God kind of faith. Principle number two. Let's work. The goal of deception is to get you to believe a lie so it can lead you away from truth. When the enemy starts speaking, he's releasing substance that he wants you to grab a hold to. The goal of deception is to get you to believe a lie so that the lie can begin to lead you away from the truth. I don't know who this is for, but one of the worst things that can happen to a believer is for a believer to do something willfully in sin and don't get caught. The worst thing that can happen to me or you is for you to steal something by way of a white collar crime and don't get caught. The worst thing that can happen is for a married man to mess around and commit adultery and don't get caught. The worst thing that can happen is for a person to, to, to do some abuse somebody and not get caught. Well, why do you say that, Pastor James? May I submit to you that if I do something and don't get caught, I mess around and I do it again. And when I mess around, I do it again. I mess around, I do it again. I am creating actions that are turning into habits. And when I have habits, I'm going to end up being a character. And I'm going to make any sense. I make a decision, then I perform the action. When I perform the action and don't get caught, it becomes a habit. When it becomes a habit, it becomes a part of my DNA. So if I've been cheating on my wife for the last six months and hadn't, get, hadn't got caught, may I submit to you, I'm becoming somebody. Something is in my heart, here it comes, and I'm starting to believe a lie. You've been doing this for so long, you might not ever get caught. And the more I believe that, truth is right here. I cheated this one. I cheated next one. I cheated the month out of that. I cheated the month out of that. I cheated the month. I'll never get caught. Whatever. This is me. Now pride, arrogance, and all of this is brewing up in me. And watch this. Now when the enemy exposes me and put the light on me, I am so far away from truth. I got to uphold an image that this is who I am. I'm ready to fight for the lie that the enemy has made me be.
May I help you? It's grace when you get caught the first time. You thought it was mercy because you ain't got caught all them times. But it was grace that you got caught the very first time. Why is that? Because watch this. If I get caught the first time, the experience is so piercing, it makes me want to turn. The word repentance means to turn. If I get caught and embarrassed the first time, it makes me But the enemy can deceive me when I don't get caught. And this month, next month, the next month, the next month, the next month, the next month, month, I have become something that is opposite of truth. Here it comes. And now when I fight to maintain my lie of my identity, you do know since you've done all that, you become a type of person. So now you got an image that you got to uphold. I do whatever I want to do. Can't nobody tell me nothing. I'm blah, 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 whatever. And the whole entire time, we don't even realize that this has been a deception that has led us away from the true identity of being the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. Being a blood bought child of the Most High God. Fearfully and wonderfully made. The salt of the world. I'm all of this up here. God says I'm accepted in the beloved. I'm more than a conqueror. I'm a son of God. But when them lies start lead me away from his truth and it starts leading me down into a place of bondage, when I get here, I will fight to stay here. This is why I'm telling you the best thing that can happen is for you to get caught the first time. Because if you don't get caught the first time, you'll start thinking that it is cool all the time. The enemy don't want you to get caught first. Because he needs to deceive you to turn you. He can't turn you until he get it until he gets your heart. It's one thing to get your mind. It's another thing for him to get your heart. And when he gets your heart, you'll walk away from the faith. You'll start saying that the church don't accept you. The church talking about you. The church dogging you out. No, it ain't got nothing to do with the church. The problem is you didn't get caught. And now you're trying to uphold an image and you're trying to be something that you're not. I don't know how I got out here. I promise you, I don't know where it's coming from. So it's actually the grace of God that I got exposed the first time. Because it's easier to repent after the first miss than it is to be locked up in some mess for five or six years. You ought to thank God that he exposed you. You ought to thank God that he put his finger on you. You ought to thank God that you got caught. Principle number three. Let me move. Let me move. I'm I'm trying to move. Principle number three. Here it comes. The enemy has an opportunity to deceive you as soon as he locates your deficit. The enemy has an opportunity to deceive you just as soon as he locates your deficit. What is that, Pastor James? And insufficiency. If I'm insufficient in love, the enemy can bring the right person to me to act like they love me and he can deceive me. If I've been insufficient in father issues, the enemy brings somebody to me to act like they my father because all I've ever wanted was a father. So therefore, he brings it to deceive me. May I submit to you that when the enemy locates your deficit, this is when he's located your desire. You don't have a deficit until first you have a desire. So watch this. When I get a desire, there is nothing wrong with my desires. Because God has given me desires. Ain't nothing God ain't about to
to give you a desire, fellas, for the fellas to say, man, I'm finna be selling me. I ain't finna have no sex. And I'm finna wait till my wife come. God ain't gonna give you the desire to have sex. But then as soon as you make that statement, take it away. What's going to happen when you get your wife? So what's, what's going on? He's trying to teach you something. Watch this. He's not going to take the desire away from you. Well, watch this. He wants you to do two things. Number one, control the desire. And the second thing is this. Watch this. It's not about the desire, but it's what the enemy tempts you to do while you have the desire in order to fulfill the Bible said in Mark Matthew the fourth chapter that Jesus is in the wilderness. Jesus is being led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be. He's being tempted of the devil. Verse 2 says, well, watch this, watch this. He's fasted for 40 days. And for 40 nights. What's the desire? Food. As soon as you get weak, he locates your greatest desire. In your position right now, your weakness may be finances. The enemy is coming to tempt you to do something that he wants you to do to get that financial blessing fulfilled. Your weakness may be relational intimacy. The enemy is coming at that intimacy to get you to do something that he wants you to fulfill. Are you with me? So, so watch this. If he locates your deficit and it is low self-esteem, what's going to happen? He's sending something at you that is going to try to fill up your low self-esteem to try to fill you up in something that you're feeling empty in. The Bible says in John, the third chapter, in the 22nd verse, can I show y'all this? Can I show y'all something? I ain't just talking. Can I show y'all? Hey, watch this. He's attacking. The enemy is trying to attack John the Baptist's low self-esteem. Watch this. Jesus has got fat. I mean, Jesus has been coming up out of the wilderness. And at this point, Jesus is in the wilderness. He, I mean, he's come out. And now, John the Baptist came before Jesus. And y'all know John the Baptist's role. Come before Jesus to baptize people to get them into the kingdom. Right? John the Baptist started before Jesus came. Then when Jesus, when this happens right here, now Jesus resurrects. He comes out, I mean, and when he comes out, my, my, D.D. Wall, bring that scripture to me. Bring it up to me. John 3rd, 22, through which name? The one I sent you. Give it all to me. Let me walk this down. Watch this. He, he did this. The disciples came to John. His disciples. They came to John, and this is what they said. Jesus, the one who you told us about, he's baptizing more disciples than you. Are you with me, Dave Wall? You with me? Well, watch this. And, and, and I got to just show you what John the Baptist said. When he said, the disciples come. Because he's doing ministry. His ministry at a high level. Jesus comes and takes it to another level. So he's in the same field with another person. And the enemy is trying to get competition to ease in, to fill up this low self-esteem. I'm trying to show you something. Man, I'm trying to show y'all something. God is working with you, but he's also working with somebody else, and they're in the same field, but what he's doing will never take away from you. Because who you are and your assignment that God has for your life, it ain't got nothing to do with them. It got everything to do with you. May I submit to you, David, while well, I'm looking for you. I need it, Dave. I need it. Oh, John, third chapter, starting at verse 22. Hold on one second. I, I got to go. I got to go. I'm so sorry. I'm trying to finish this. I'm trying to finish it. I, I got to get it to you. I got, I got to give this to you. Okay, about time. Okay, okay. Then Jesus and his disciples left for a length of time into the Judean countryside where he baptized people. At this time, John was baptizing people from Aon and Salem where the, there was plenty of water and the people kept coming for John.
that the crossing place, he's now baptizing more people, baptizing crowds larger than yours. People are flocking to him. If John the Baptist got low self-esteem and the enemy locates the low self-esteem, now the deception comes so he can get in competition with Jesus. It's kind of like this, man. The Lord has blessed Harley Initiated, right? But he's also blessed uh, uh, Latarius. Uh, what's the name of it? Uh, uh, yeah, free dear future wifey. Watch, watch this. Dear future wifey has come to the scene, and now they're trying to. Now nah, people trying. To, do you realize what dear future wifey doing? Blah 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 blah. If you got low self esteem, you'll start competing with him, not realizing that there is there can never be no competition with an original. Hardly initiating is an original. They are an original. So if you start trying to compete with an original, you the one gonna make a fool out of your. John said, what's this? John said, let me straighten y'all out. Because you came to the right one today. A person cannot receive not even one thing unless God puts it on their life. You've heard it from me. Here it comes. I am not the Messiah. I am not trying to be something I ain't. I'm not trying to do something I ain't called to do. I'm not trying to compete against somebody else. He says, um, nah, he says, go back, go back, D-Wall, go back, go back, go back, go back. He says, he says this, I am not the Messiah, but certainly I am. Don't tell me about another preacher. I'm me. Don't compare me about to another preacher. I'm me. Don't try to talk me out of who I am. I'm me. The enemy will deceive you out of your business. He'll deceive you out of your career. He will deceive you out of your goals. He will deceive you. When I'm struggling with identity and I don't know who I am, the enemy will steal the identity that God gave to me. Watch this. He says, I'm the messenger. I was sent ahead of Jesus. He's the bridegroom. And the bride belongs to him. In other words, I'm getting in my position. You can't push me out of my position. I'm getting in my position. You can't talk me out of my position. I'm getting in my position. You can't kick me out of my position. I'm getting out of my position. There is no competition. There is no comparison. There is no you versus me. In all actuality, I need you just like you need me. I need your gifts. I need your strengths. I need your perspective. I need your hand. I need... This is why God calls us, come here, the body of Christ. Ty, if I'm the elbow and you are the arm, you can't move if I'm not in position. We got too many quarterbacks and ain't enough wide receivers. We got too many quarterbacks, ain't enough tailbacks. We got too many quarterbacks, ain't enough tackles. We got too many. John the Baptist say, he's the bridegroom. And the bride belongs to him. Here it comes. I'm the friend. Ain't nothing like knowing your position. Ain't nothing like playing your part. Watch this. Here comes the whole kick it off. You got to be excited for your part. You can't be honoring my part, but envying my part. You can't be wanting my part. You can't be pushing it my part. You can't be fighting to steal my part. 
you got to like your hallelujah 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 i want to do my part i want to do my part i want to execute my part We ain't done. John say, I'm the friend of the bridegroom. Hear me. He says this, I stand nearby and I listen with great joy for whatever he says. Hear, hear, because of his words, Not my words, not everybody else's words, but his words. My joy, it is complete and it overflows. It is necessary, I'm gone, I'm gone. It is necessary for him to increase. And for me, I'm a decrease. Talk about me like you may, but you can't beat me when I'm like this. You can run away from me. But you can't beat me when I'm like this. You can't knock me down when I'm like this. You can't throw me away when I'm like this. You can't count me out when I'm like this. Because I'm in the position of prayer. I am in the position of humility. And the Lord said, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God. For in due time, he will exalt you. I'm waiting on my time. 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 It's your time. It ain't my time. It's your time. It ain't my time. I'm humbling myself. And I'm waiting on your voice. Whatever you are doing. Whatever you are saying. Whatever you are believing. I'm humble. I'm rejoicing. I'm pushing you. I'm giving it to you. Is it your time? Is it your time? Is it your time to humble yourself? Is it your time to exalt? The enemy has deceived so many of us because we missed the Kairos moment because we swapped it out for the Kronos time. I feel the Holy Ghost. Malo, I feel the wisdom, spirit of wisdom. Here it comes. Kronos time is the set time that scripture says after you go through the seasons, or go through the process, then at this place, you get elevated. We focus on the chronos. We focus on how long we've been in a position, how much we sold, how much we served, how much we, and watch this, thinking that because I'm in chronos time, that can deceive me to say, it's my time. But Kairos. Kronos is about the analytical way. Kairos is about God's way. God will break the rules of Kronos time when you get in the right position. I don't know who I'm talking to on today, but don't let the enemy deceive you out of this position. This is the position of prayer, and this is the position of humility. Humble yourself under the mighty hand of God, for in due time, Holy Spirit, 
ans. Holy Spirit. Come. Holy Spirit. spirit of pride Come flow. we bind the spirit of arrogance Feel the we bind the spirit of idolatry we say oh, holy spirit holy God. come That's what our hearts long for. show us our hearts to be help us to understand that the goal of deception is to lead us away from truth Jesus said I am the way the truth and the life no man cometh to the Father except by me Father we want this revelation show us this that truth is not something Show us that truth is someone. Holy Spirit, come. Father, search my heart. Identify the desires and the deception. Father, bring it to my face so that I can repent and stay close to truth. In the name of Jesus, release the spirit of repentance in this room. Release the spirit of humility in this room. Release the spirit of love in this room. In Jesus' name. Holy Spirit, come. may be somebody in this house right now that you know without a shadow of a doubt you need to give your life to Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior right now if that is you right now I don't want to break this moment I don't want to make people sit down because I feel the Spirit of God so strong I want to stay in this middle this middle this rhythm but if that is you I need you to raise your hand up high if you want to give your life to Jesus Christ and make him your personal Lord and Savior, I want you to raise your hand up right now. You know without a shot of a doubt. That go one, that go one, that go one. Come on, y'all. Come on, come on. You know that the enemy has deceived you. You know that the enemy has turned you. You know that the enemy has just been doing a well. He's been, he's been running your mind crazy. And you know without a shot of a doubt that today, you need to make Jesus Lord and Savior. If that's you, keep your hand high. Keep your hand. Will there be any more? Will there be any more? Somebody, that go another one in the back. That go another one in the back. I see it. I see that hand. I see that hand. Hallelujah. Will there be any more? Will there be any more? Come on in. It ain't nothing to be embarrassed about. It ain't nothing to be ashamed of. Come on in. Come on in. You can't do this by yourself. You can't turn your life around by yourself. You need God and you need God's people to lead you into a place of truth. Will there be any more? Will there be any more? I know it's one more hand in here. Is it one more hand? Is it one more? Is it one more? Is it one more? Come on. Come on. Come on. Is there one more? One more. There it goes. 
There it goes. Come on, y'all. Come on, come on, come on. Hallelujah. Keep your hand up. We got three people right now that decided to give their lives to Jesus Christ as their personal Lord and their personal Savior. Come on. Mountains. You cause words to fall with your power. Before miracles, there is nothing that's in To everybody that's under the sound of my voice. Everybody be seated if you don't mind. I got to do this last altar call. You be seated, be seated, be seated. Stay in the rhythm of the spirit. Stay in the rhythm of the spirit. If there is some people in this place today that you know without a shadow of a doubt that you belong to this church family, you supposed to be a part of this family, you know you belong here. I'm, we are opening up our arms as a family to invite you in on today. We want to have a 10 minute party for you. We want to celebrate you. We want to honor you. We want to appreciate you. If that is you, raise your hand. Raise, that go one. Come on, come on. Raise your hand. How many? How many? Come on, that go two. Come, come on, come on. How many? I'm looking for some more. I'm looking for some more. That go three. That go three. Come on. Come on. Come on. Was there any more? Is there any more? There one, two, three, four. We got four. Five. That go five. Come on. Come on. Come on in. Come on in. Count them all. Count them all. Give me a number. Give me a number, Charles. Give me a number. A complete number. Give me a number. Come on. There is nothing. How many do we have in all? How many do we have in all? Did y'all count them all? Charles, did you count them all? How many do we got in all? We got six. We got six people join the house. We got six people join the house. We got six people. I believe it's four more. I truly believe that today is 10. I think it's four more people in here. You know without a shadow of a doubt that you're supposed to be a part of transforming faith. All you got to do is just raise your hand. All you got to do is just raise your hand. I'm done. I'm done. Is there be any more? Will there be any more? One more. That go one. That go one. That go one. Do we got three more? Do we got three more? I feel it in my spirit. I feel it in my spirit today. Is there any more? Don't know how. They say they coming in on YouTube. They coming in on YouTube. They coming in the Transforming Faith E Church. They coming in from the outside to the inside. Ladies and gentlemen, God is doing something at Transforming Faith Christian Center. Come be a part. Hallelujah. He's doing something new. He's doing something new. He's doing something new. He's doing. He's doing something new. Uh -huh. He's doing something new. Uh, 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 uh. To everybody 
that receive Jesus as their personal Lord and Savior. As soon as the service is over, look to my right, these two young, lovely young ladies right here, Latrice and Lanisa right here, Go get, they're going to come to you, they're going to take you to the back, and they're going to give you your next step in getting you baptized on the day Baptism Sunday is going to be. Also, for everybody who said they feel a part of Transforming Faith Christian Center, we have a 10-minute party just for you. Well, we want to meet you. Well, we want to honor you. Well, we want to celebrate you and welcome you into the Transforming Faith Christian Center family. It is right around the corner at this next room next door. We believe that we're going to have a full house in there so for every guest if this is your first time if this is your first time i want to meet you in that place also to every guest this is your first time coming i want to meet you so i can shake your hand so i can love on you so i can honor you so i can meet you i don't want you to just come and say i had service didn't meet the pastor on this day i want to meet you meet me in a 10 minute party ladies and gentlemen let's worship the lord in our giving right here come on come on y'all let's worship the lord in our Ain't giving no what the night is gonna bring uh, uh, hey, uh, It'll be all over I tell you in the morning Hallelujah hey, Ain't no need to worry hey, What the night is gonna bring And uh, it will be It will be all over In the morning Everybody in the morning In the morning, the morning. Everybody To everybody that's under the sound of my voice, you know you want to give by way of cash, you need an envelope, all you got to do is just raise your hand right here. Keep your hands high, keep your hands high. Charles, everybody paying attention, everybody paying attention. Kevin, y'all paying attention. We need to give everybody envelopes. They need to give, they need to get envelopes. So everybody pay attention to the people who got their hands up to give them envelopes. The Bible says in Genesis 8 and 22, keep your hands up until the envelope get to you. Keep your hands up until the envelope gets to you. To everybody that's under the sound of my voice, listen to me. The Bible says in Genesis 8 and 22, as long as the earth remains, there will always be seed time and harvest. This means that if you can just sow the seed, you can expect the seed, the harvest to come back. You can't expect a harvest in any place you haven't sown a seed. To everybody that is giving by way of a, of a, by way of a cash out, you can go to dollar sign, transforming faith to sow your seed. To everybody that's giving by way of push pay, you on YouTube, you can go to push pay. You on TikTok, you can go to push pay. You can go to, you can text TFCC to the number 77977. The Bible says if you give sparingly, you will reap sparingly. But if you give bountifully, you will reap bountifully. We here at Transforming Faith, Transforming Faith, and you can sow your seed at Dollar Sign Transforming Faith. You can text TFCC to the number 77977 to everybody that's under the sound of my voice. Don't ever miss an opportunity to sow in an atmosphere where you know that the Spirit of God is permeating in, in Jesus' name. To everybody that's under the sound of my voice, you can stand to your feet. Hallelujah. Did everybody who wanted an envelope, did you get one? Did you get one? Just making sure. Just making sure. Okay. So listen to me. We're thoroughly convinced and fully persuaded. But by your words, you will be justified. By your words, you will be condemned. That death and life is in the power of the tongue. So we can speak life to our finances. We can speak power to our finances. We can speak favor to our finances. This is what we believe. This is what we keep seeing. 
And this is why we keep doing it. We keep seeing the favor and the blessings from it. Open up your mouth and repeat this behind me. Say this, as we give our tithes, as we sow our seeds, as we give our offerings, we are actively believing God for jobs, better jobs, raises, bonuses, and benefits, an increase in sales, an increase in commissions, settlements being favored, on our behalf, estates and inheritances, being released, unexpected income, being released, rebates and returns, checks in the mail, gifts and surprises, finding money, debts paid off, expenses are decreasing, blessings and increase are flowing in us, flowing through us, and flowing all around us. I thank you, Lord, for meeting all my financial needs. I thank you, Lord, that I have more than enough to give into the kingdom of God and to promote the gospel of Jesus Christ. I am a giver. I am a seed sower. And you said you give seed to the sower. Now fill me with more seed to sow. Father, in Jesus' name, I bless every giver. I bless every tither. I bless every seed sower. To the person that had a desire to sow, to the person that had a desire to give, but they just didn't have it. Father, I speak a turnaround anointing over their finances right now in Jesus' name. To every person that's giving, to every person that gave, Father, I speak Isaiah 61 and 7 over their, over their seed. Double for your trouble. I speak the double over their finances. I speak the double over their faith. I speak the double over their favor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. You may be seated as the ushers begin to collect the buckets. You may be seated, ladies and gentlemen. I'm going to pass it over to Minister Aaron Hingston so he can close out the service. I'll see you all in a second. Go ahead. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Give God a hand clap of praise. Amen. Come on, give God a hand clap of praise. We praise and thank God for our leader, Pastor James. Amen. He preached an uncompromising word on today. Would you all agree with that? Amen. We praise and thank God. To all of our salvation candidates, those three individuals who said, I want to be saved today, please stand on your feet for me. We're going to release you now. Please, if you would, follow Sister Latrice and Sister Lanisa outside into the room where you all will get additional information on today. Amen. We want to invite each of you back, of course, this Wednesday, but then, of course, on the following Sunday, Resurrection Sunday. Amen. We are going to celebrate Christ for his sacrifice, and we praise and thank God. The flyer is here. Please share with your friends, share with your family, invite them out. We're going to have an awesome time in God on Sunday. Amen. Also, be reminded that registration is now open for the Freedom Conference. Amen. It will be held right here at TFCC on April 4th, 5th, and 6th. And we have a video announcement from Pastor James right now. train and equip believers in the area of the prophetic. The Hello, ladies and gentlemen. My name is James Edwards, senior pastor of Transforming Faith Christian Center right here in Houston, Texas, and I want to welcome you out to our first annual Freedom Conference here April 3rd, April 4th, and April 5th. The theme for this year's conference is entitled Wisdom for Warfare, and the aim is to educate, empower, train, and equip believers in the area of the prophetic, deliverance, and healing. You will hear from generals like Apostle John Eckhart, Dr. Sharon Nesby, Pastor Brandon Clack, Pastor Jerry Flowers, and I will be teaching you how to get free and how to deliver people from unhealthy and ungodly soul ties. You can register for the conference right now at thefreedomconference.info. Meet me here in Houston, Texas at Transforming Faith Christian Center so you can get the wisdom for warfare. Amen, give God praise. Hey Amen. I don't know about you, but to be in a house that invests in you is important. Amen. And so we're coming for three days and three nights of excellent teaching so that we can be downloaded into and that we can grow and be better on the backside. Amen.
So we praise and thank God. Registration is open immediately after service out at the registration table. And again, you can register at the freedomconference.info. To everyone who is part of the Resurrection production, please meet immediately after service in the sanctuary today. To anyone who desires prayer, anyone who desires additional prayer, our intercessors are coming now, and they are moving to the altar and will be available immediately after service, okay? And so immediately after service, we want you all to come to the altar. The intercessors will be here, and they will pray with you. Again, for those individuals that desire prayer, please come to the altar immediately after service. And for all of those who are in the Easter production, we'll see you immediately after intercessory prayer. Okay? Amen. Repeat after me. I am a faith giant. I am a faith giant. I walk by faith. I walk by faith. I talk by faith. I, talk by faith. I move by faith. I move by faith. And I decide by faith. I, decide by faith. I will have a great week because of my faith. Because of my faith. I have great favor. I have great favor because of my faith. Of my faith. And, I and I will execute my God-given mission, my God -given mission because, of my faith. because of my faith. Go in peace. Amen.